everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening. Welcome to the Spartan Show. I'm Trevor Lake. This is our Me Too. It's an absolute pleasure to be joined this evening by Mr. Enzo Macronelli. Hello there, Enzo. Hi, guys. Hello, Enzo. Thanks for joining us. And uh, what we thought would be nice if we could have a catch up with you, just talk about, you know, boxing, your career, you know, how you got into boxing. So just a bit of an informal chat and a catch up and yeah. uh, let people that people hear your story really that's the whole whole idea of it so i mean um if you don't mind me asking how you doing though how are you coping with this whole covid lockdown situation are you bored out your brain or uh... to be honest i'm okay because uh 2019 beginning of 2020 I, I was suffering from a herniated disc uh mm -hmm. i had the, i had the, the disc i lost my brother 2019 i got hit by a car a couple of days later popped my disc out of my back uh Jesus. couldn't couldn't walk for eight months then I started oh, walking slowly, still in pain. So 2020 has been okay for me. Uh, I got back running. I, I set myself a goal to get myself back in fighting, fighting shape. And uh, I've certainly done that. Uh, the, only, the only thing that is a, is a pain for me, I run an amateur boxing club uh, and I got 50 kids in the gym and a uh, few of them are troubled, a few of them got problems. And you know, without them being in the gym, I'm having constant phone calls all the time off them. And, I, I'm one of these. I'm a typical Zodiac Leo. You know, if someone phones me nine times out of ten, I won't answer. I'll just phone them back when I can be bothered. That is just me. But any one of my boys phone, you know, the the phone, the answer is there straight away, like just to see how they are. So that's probably the the biggest thing for me. And and to see my young boy, one of my boys, he, you know, he, he's used to going out all the time. He's thirteen. He's a good kid. He's used, you know, to see him stuck in the house and on a in Xbox and PlayStation, whatever he's got. Um, uh, you know, that's probably the, the downside to it all for me. Like. Yeah. So, you know, and we're all going to say regarding this, the amateurs, what's going to so yeah, so happen? Are... Anything this, regarding the amateurs ends, right. is there, there going to be any kind of opening this year, do you think, or you don't think so? I don't think so. We was, Did... we was just about the end of the Welsh Championships. I had, yeah. uh, I had 10 boys entering. Uh, I got mm -hmm. I got a good team. I got I got some novice boys who are well above the level, so I was going to put them in anyway because I know they do well. Um, they cancelled. Then I were yearning they were going to reopen back in April, uh, yeah. and then all this has happened again. So it wouldn't surprise me if you wouldn't see it all year. I mean, ends up, you know, I still have a lot to do with my old amateur gym, right. and um, I, I know one or two of them. Even with what, what was meant to be going to the Olympics, they're going to say, said, uh, forget it, I'm turning pro now, you know. Yeah. So that's why I asked to see how you were getting on with yours, you know. Um, um, it's it's one, one lad, one lad turning pro. Uh, a couple of asked me. Um, I've been nagged and nagged for years to get my pro box, uh, pro trainer's license. Um, I haven't been very interested, to be honest, because. Uh, but my boys in my gym, I, I love them the best. You know, I got I got I got a bond with them. I think me taking on someone else who I don't know uh, doesn't really appeal to me at the moment. Uh, but I always said if one of my boys wanted to turn pro, uh, I would I would get the license. So you okay. asked me, uh, and I will. Uh, but again, you know, he's been he's been waiting now for seven eight months, and there's no light at the end of the tunnel. I don't know when he could have his first fight, and, and he's a good kid as well. Yeah, it's a shame that you know. I mean, I, I mean, the good thing is now, when back in me and your day, you couldn't, uh, you couldn't have a, you couldn't go and get. You was even an amateur or a professional trainer. Now you can be an amateur trainer, and you can turn over to a professional trainer. Mm. Back when me and you were pros, you weren't allowed to do that. You know, you well, were an amateur. You had to leave your amateur coach and go to a professional coach. Well, so. well it was that bad. It was that bad in them days. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I was fifteen years of age. You put me in with a 15-year-old kid, I was knocking him cold. I, I did. I couldn't get fights. From the age of 14, 15, I couldn't get fights. So my my experience I gained was sparring professionals. I was 15. I was older than my own with seasoned professionals. And I, I was just yeah. as big as half of them. Uh, I've seen some of your fights, I know, in the amateurs. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> that, that fight you've seen in the amateurs. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think I was two weeks after my 17th birthday. And two weeks before before that, I was sparring Nicky Piper. I was Nicky Piper's main oh, sparring yeah, partner for Janis Nikolczewski. So I learned my trade at 15, having, having fallout wars with professional fighters. Uh, mm -hmm. But it wasn't allowed. We had to do it behind closed doors. Yes. It wasn't allowed. Um, 
pros and amateurs, as you know, weren't allowed to mix really. Yeah. Um, I remember what it was like. Then. So without 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 my dad being sneaky and taking me over to spar a lot of pros, I probably wouldn't have gained any the experience that I had. Because I fighting wise, up until up until fifteen, I was getting loads of fights. I won junior ABAs. Uh, I won every national title. Uh, but then. You know, no one wants to see a 14 year old kid getting sparked cold. And that's, that's what I was doing. I was hitting kids cold at 14. Like, I think my quickest, the quickest knockout, it was 13, 30, uh, 35 seconds, I think it was. And the, the, wow. kid, was, <laughs> the, kid, the kid was out cold, <laughs> flat in his face. It must have been so, it must have been frightening. You know, I, I'm laughing now, but it must have been so frightening for his parents. Yeah. Like, yeah, it must have been really. I suppose now you're training the kids. You know, if you saw that happen to one of your boys. I- that's why you can relate to it. So it must have been frightening for the, you know, for the parents of that kid at that oh, time, I, you know. I get more nervous when my boys fight than when I fight. Uh, it's, it's absolutely people. People ask me, do I get the same sort of um, buzz that I get when my boys win? Hundred percent, I do. It's, it's hard to explain. I remember I boxed, boxed in Russia. I boxed for a European title. I won first round knockout. Just won a European title. And in the middle of the ring, I'm on the phone to my dad, and people thought I was telling my dad I won. I phoned my dad because we had a kid in the junior the junior world championships that day in Azerbaijan. I wanted to find out how he got off, uh, and as it happens, he won. So it was a great day. Brilliant. So that's uh, I mean we've spoken to like well, we, we talk a lot to um, Isham Pickering, don't we? Of yeah, we and, do. Um, yeah. He's, yeah, he does a lot of training now. You remember me? And you Junior Witter. No, they're a good fighter. Yeah, yeah we were chatting to those win. guys. Yeah, but they're, they're training now as well, and they said exactly the same as you. Like Isham was telling us, you know, because obviously he won all the titles at domestic level, British, Commonwealth, European, and the world title always eluded him, mm. you know. And um, But he was, you know, and he's not bitter about it in any shape or form, but he said what he does now, now he's training his kids. Mm. You know, his hope is, and he gets that same rush from training them and seeing them box. And obviously his hope is one day that one of them will win a world title. And he said to him, that's going to feel, you know, that will feel equally, if not better, than if he'd won a world title himself, you know? I can, I can totally go with him. You know, I've been involved in the amateur game. Since when I was 14 years of age, I used, I don't know how, how it works. I used to, I used to match my father's shows. You know, my father's my trainer of his club. I used to get on the phone. I used to match boys. And every show he had, I sort of matched it. So I've always, I've always been involved uh, in the amateur game. You know, I just, I just enjoy the buzz. I enjoy fighting and uh, to see my kids fighting. And, uh, and like I said, I got some good kids. I got, I got kids with five fights. They fighting boys with 70, 80 fights. And all the oh. if not winning, it's ridiculous. So you know, I'm not. Listen, I, I will tell you in our day, I. There's no way you would tell him, Court Joe, I don't want to fight him. I don't want to fight no, him. No, no. <laughs> basically, you fight him Friday. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, I, I sort of discipline my boys like that. They don't ask me nothing. But you go to the shows. I had, a, I had a kid. My boy was half, no, he was a pound heavier. He was a pound heavier than his opponent. And the coach wouldn't let it happen for a pound in weight. Really? It was just absolutely ridiculous. This, but, that's the way he was. But, you know, we've got, like, kids today. You're fighting Friday. Oh, who's he boxed? What's he done? What's he had for breakfast? When our day, it was basically, you're fighting Friday. You are done. That's right. There was, he was too scared to uh, oh, what, <laughs> say anything. He wouldn't, but he... wouldn't question me, dude. It was basically, <laughs> you're fighting Friday. Oh. Okay. That's it. Don't ask, me. Don't ask nothing. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, and, yeah, and my coach, he was a... Uh, He's a he's an Olympic coach now. He he trained um, Anthony Josh Anthony Joshua Bobby Dillon, and right, oh my yes. word, yeah, that was that was my coach. You know, he trains in England a lot now, like, and he was so strict. I was frightened. He, oh, you're fighting Friday, and I, my heart used to used to be come to my throat. Like what you know, I used to you I couldn't say no. You know what I mean? I was scared of him to be quite honest with you. <laughs> in, in, in all fairness, I was scared of my dad, but the boys the boys with me they know. People think I rule with an iron fist. I don't. I got such good boys. Um, I, I build a, a work ethic in them. I build discipline in them. Uh, but we have a laugh. You know, they all look forward to coming to the gym. They all look forward to, to doing something. And, you know, in these troubled times, I think kids kids have grown up a lot softer than me, me and you did. Uh, yeah. in, in ways t- teachers can't shout to them. 
uh, police can't shout to them. So when I was younger, and I bet you the same, if you, had a, if you messed up in school and the teacher said, I'm going to phone your father, it'd be all oh, fucking shit. Of you course, know? yeah, we're yeah. friends. Now, yeah. now, now yeah. they don't care. Now they don't care. Okay. All, my, no. all my boys are desperate. I wouldn't say they were scared of me, mm. but they know if I say we're fighting Friday, they have trust in me, knowing I trust yeah. them. So it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's sort of swings and roundabouts. They know not to mess about. And in fairness, none of them do. They all they all call me with a dog one like half a time, but I don't mind that because it's all fun, it's all fun. It's all it's all it's all games. But I make sure my lads in these troubling times, and like I said, they've grown up a little bit softer than we did. If they got any problems, they know my door's always open, my phone's always on. Um, if they ever need someone to talk to, so total total. Uh, in private, you know they can like. So I just I just make that out, and I think. It's a it's a it's a bad bad world we live in at the moment. Oh, I know. Yeah, no, it isn't good. It isn't good. I mean, that's so good that you. I mean, you see, you, you go beyond your coaching duties, your trainer duties, then really, don't you? You're there, you're like a mentor. It's, it's 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 a lot of trainers about, but it's not many coaches about. Uh, mm, like, yeah. You know, I like my dad when I was younger. My dad, you know, people always say to me, "As down to earth you are," and things like that. And it's all come from my dad. My dad always said to me, when you finish, I want people to say, Enzo, phew, what a fighter. Enzo, what a nice guy. And I, I've always brought that along with me. And I, all my all my boys, if we, they go out somewhere, I know they're representing themselves and representing their club. And I am got one, I, I want to have one problem with them doing anything untoward to bring bring anything towards the club or themselves. Like, so they're all, they're all very polite, they're all very disciplined, but, but they can all fight. Yeah, I see. I mean, I see a few of your posts. You know, back before COVID wrecked everything, you know, and everyone's just shut themselves away. You used to post a lot on Twitter with your gym. You know, the lads in the gym. You know, and um, you know different little stories and things about fights coming up. And you know, it was always, it was always really good to read because you know it was a refreshing change from a lot of the yeah. stuff you see. You know, yeah, they, they take they take a bit of shit off me on Twitter as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good though. That's a good thing. Oh, it's like, it's like, I mean, it, it, it's these, it is. They've got it quite easy these days. I mean, I'm 45 now, you know, and ban- you know, it's a different world. Ban- banter. They they slowly trying to take banter away from everything, and I'm from me, but they are. I went I went to do a coaching course for the Welsh ABA, and I just couldn't believe, I couldn't believe some of the stuff they were telling me what I could do. Um, you know, I have a laugh at this because he he grown up the the same sort of me grown up. And don't mention yeah. nothing. The coach tells you to do something, you do it. End of story. It, yeah. it was basically the new rule, rule is if a fighter doesn't want to do something, you've got to find them an alternative. So I asked I asked the guy, well, what do you mean? He said, well, if they don't like something, you have got to find them an alternative. He said, what's what's your warm up? And I said, I got a hill by the gym. It's two miles up, two miles down that. And he said, that's your warm-up. I said, yeah, I've done it for years. He said, well, what would happen if one of them didn't want to go up the hill? I said, well, I'd ask them if they got an injury, uh, any problems, or anything like that. If they say no, they're going up the fucking hill. <laughs> am I it's true, though. Am I to <laughs> yeah, you can swear away, mate. Yeah, swear. <laughs> it's not a PG-13 station. You're all right. You're going up Take the like. So they said, oh, you can't do that. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, if they don't want to do it, if they don't like doing it, you've got to, you've got to make them skip. You've got to <laughs> give them the choice to skip. I said, like, fuck, I will. I said, they're not going up there. They'll have my boot up their ass and they're out the door. <laughs> but can you imagine you telling your coach, oh, I, I want to go running. No chance. No, no chance. Do. No, no way. Do. And I, I told them at the end, I told them at the end, I said, you're, you're breeding fitness instructors. You're trying to, you're supposed to, these the parents got to have so much trust in the coach looking after their kids. And if you've got a coach who will pretty much let them get away with anything, it's not going to do them no good at all. No, I totally agree. But you and know, they won't they learn mean, any discipline, will they? I mean, it is about, I'm, again, you guys are the, the, you know, the pro boxers. I mean, surely a lot of that, that skill set comes from the discipline that's, you know, to get to the very top of your sport, it's taken a lot of discipline. Probably well, the guidance is a massive part. I'm but 40, I'm 40 now. I'm still out in the morning, six o'clock in the morning running. I got no, no thing about it. And and that's, and that's just, people say, how do you do it? And I, it's just been ingrained in me. Mm. It's just been yeah. ingrained in me to train and push myself to the limits. You know, I like to think my, fa- 
my father was a bit harder than me on it than anyone else in the gym and uh, yeah. he obviously seen something in me uh, which he didn't see in others but you know I used to think I used to think he used to pick on me and things like that but he he wouldn't he wouldn't he was just making sure I was getting right and you know I used, I used to wait in my times he, he wouldn't let me go out on the weekends and he wouldn't let me have my pocket money unless I trained and things like that and, but it, it all paid off in the end yeah, exactly fantastic. he was absolutely right in what he did wasn't he oh, you know? I mean at least the I mean that thought, takes us to a good yeah. go ahead no, I've gone, mate. Oh, oh, I was just going to say you, this, you know I, I was going to say um, and this is the same situation in the in the pros nowadays where <laughs> they, they, they're not coaches they're trainers you know yeah 100%. like the amateurs do you agree you know? 100% you know I, I was reading I was reading I was, who was I talking to? I was talking to someone on Twitter and it, it started off as Maradona. They were talking about Maradona. I think it was Curtis Woodhouse. And Curtis said, oh, sarcastically, he said, oh, imagine someone got older Maradona with a strength and conditioning program, how good he would be. And I started laughing. And I and some guy jumped in um, on another tweet and he said, yeah, strength and conditioning would improve the older day fighters. I said, no, it wouldn't. I said, the best fighters I've ever seen were Duran, Leonard, Hagler, Hearns. All they done was run and box. It's That's right. all they done. Mm. That's all they Kazagi, you know, I spent years with Kazagi. Mm-hmm. He, he didn't do no, nothing other than run, pads and spar. That's it. Mm. And, you know, he's pro- quite possibly Britain's, Britain's greatest fighter. Um, oh, without a doubt. Oh, without you, a you, doubt. Start, you start sticking a, a strength and conditioning and weights program on him. It's going to slow him down. And Hagler, Leonard, Duran, and Hearns, they were doing 15 rounds flat out. Nowadays, you've got boys getting tired after seven or eight rounds. It's true. They're not, you know, That's it's true. Right to like Anthony Joshua, though, isn't it? I've always said that with him because no disrespect, great fighter. They're all brilliant, you know, brave men and women getting in the ring regardless. But he seems to have lost it a bit now. But he was a, a, few, a couple of years back. He was proper meaty, wasn't he? Like muscle on muscle. Yeah, I think he was and he a lot used of strength. To be I think I think the, the Ruiz fight. The loss, he learned from that. He come oh, back stronger, yeah. he come back better. I think I, I might be totally wrong, but I think he had Robert McCracken take more control. Rather yeah, I, than, I totally agree. Rather than someone telling Robert McCracken what days to put him on pads, what days to do this, what days to do that. When I was at my best, when I when I, obviously when I was in Angel Kazagi, I done pads every day. I done pads or sparring every day. I done runs every day. But I well I, I never picked up a weight and I, I didn't need to. I was just physically and functionally very, very strong. And I think Joshua, yeah. Joshua showed he's a good champion, just not from the loss. Everyone can lose, everyone can make a mistake. I think he underestimated yeah. Ruiz, how, how fast Ruiz's hands were. And, you know, he was no mug. Um, but I think in the second fight, I think changed the, chain, changed, changed the training plan, looked a lot slimmer, looked a lot leaner, looked a lot fitter. Uh, and you know that's that's a, that's a sign of a champion. Yeah, 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 definitely. I mean, for you, I mean, you, going back a bit. I mean, you're talking about obviously when you were younger and you, your dad tried. So, how did the boxing come around for you though? That was one thing I was always interested to find out. You know, I mean, obviously you say your dad was your coach early on. So, how did you get into the boxing? How did that come around? My dad, I am, I swear to this day, planned me with his mother, with my mother, for me to be a fighter. I really? swear, I swear, I believe that. He never said it, but I believe that hundred percent. I got a picture of me um, in the gym watching my dad spar my brother when I was three oh. years of age in a bag. Wow! Oh. So I always don't get me wrong. I won't met. I won't train him properly. I was just up the gym. My dad was in gyms. So I was up the gym. I was annoying. I was annoying all the older boys. He was giving me a kick of the ass and stuff like that. So I was doing the heads in. Uh, I, I started I started fighting at 10. Uh, I had an old, my dad's friend, Nigel Page, good fighter. Uh, Barry McGuigan always said he'd give him his hardest fight uh, in the amateurs. Um, passed away now, sadly. But he had me up the gym Christmas day training at 10 years of age. I still believe wow. this. Do you know what I mean? He, he took me up yeah. on Christmas day, 10 years of age. And from that day, I haven't missed Christmas day once. I miss training on Christmas Day. Nah, For real? Always, always, in the gym. always in the gym, always running Christmas Day without a doubt. For 30 years, I have not missed. Wow. 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 What's, your, what's your family think about that then? I suppose they're used to it. They haven't got a choice, do they? 
Dedication, mate. Hey, 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 let me go for a run for an hour. Or going up the pub to get pissed for an hour, isn't it? So, <laughs> true. True. But true. They, have, they have no choice, you know, it's, it's, yeah. no, not, not saying no one's going to tell me what to do, but I don't, unless you're my dad, you don't get to tell me what to do. <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> so how many amateur fights did you have, Enzo? I had 50 amateur fights at 146. Wow. wow. And probably good. knocked out for, and probably not, I'm probably I was going to say, probably knocked them all out. Knocked, uh, knocked them all out, knocked out. I, I know, I knocked had, out four, do you think? I, I only had six of them. I had the six, other one left the ring, didn't bother. <laughs> yeah. I had six or, se- six or seven senior fights. That's all I had. Um, I knocked them. I knocked five out in the first round, cold, and I knocked one out in the fourth, because you should do five tools then. Um, I, I had a few knockouts as a kid as well, yes. So, but yeah. seven senior fights, seven... Six first round knockout, one fourth round. So I got got a few got a few wax on my rag, really. That's quite hard as an amateur as well, isn't it, to knock people out. That's quite impressive because amateurs aren't renowned for knocking people out so much, are they? I've I've seen my video, my first senior fight oh, when I was I, I did. You were like someone hit me with a k- <laughs> kitchen sink. Well it, it was, it was, <laughs> it was I had I had boxed for two years and they phoned they phoned my dad up and they said have we got an open class heavyweight. And he said, yeah, Enzo. He said, no, no, no. He said, I'm looking for an open class heavyweight. He said, yeah, Enzo. He said, Enzo, I'm boxed for two years, Mario. My dad's in Mario. He said, yeah, I'm boxed for two years. He said, look, you can't put Enzo in with a, with a novice. He's going to kill him. So he said, look, you're going to have the fight, but it's on you. So I got to the arena. I'd seen a little article from a local paper. I think I was 17. The boy was 24, 25. Uh, I think he lost in the ABA's finals a year before. Um, and in the paper said, Enzo, brilliant schoolboy. Don't expect too much of him, though. Uh, even though for two years, he's really up against it tonight. Cut a long story short, I think it was a minute and a half. Uh, he was flat on his face. Um, and I think that's when the journey began. Have you seen that Enzo? That's the one that got hit in the kitchen sink, yeah? Yeah, you feel, you feel like... <laughs> I think I have seen it. I have to. I have to remember. I don't know. I, have to, I don't know. I'll have to have another. But it, yeah, it sounds. Um, yeah, it sounds like one not to be missed. Oh, it's a, it's a, it's a nasty knockout as well. Uh, oh, I have yeah. to, have to send me that off. Yeah, I'll send it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Ed, yeah. You had a, Ed, you had a fantastic professional career. Only one thing that you didn't win. I just wondered how you feel about it. Um, the British title. You never won it, it that, right? Did it not bother you not winning it outright though? Because you won everything, you claimed upon everything. The British no. title, you, you only it, won it, it once. It and you gave it up, didn't you? You gave it up. Yeah, I gave it up because I had um, an offer to fight over Mackenzie, um, the rematch oh. over Mackenzie, and that's. Oh. I think that was something more that I wanted to put right because what happened the first fight. I think that. Yes. But then when I look at it, I actually beat. You know, we've we got to win it and defend it three times. Yeah. To keep the belt, I actually beat. Four current British champions. So they were they were the champion each time I beat them. Bruce Scott, McPhilbin, and Mark Hobson twice. They were the current yeah. British champion. So I thought to myself, that's four. I box I box four champions. I box. Uh, so I sort of ordered myself a a replica British belt just to keep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, wow. yeah, so they're, they're quite nice. They're yeah. quite nice, aren't they? I actually got one of them myself. <laughs> when I when I when I boxed Bruce Scott, the WBU title was on the line. Uh, I was yeah. only it was my fourteen fight. I was twenty one or twenty two, um, and all I seen was a WBU. Oh, I you know I, I didn't really think it was a world title. It was just but it said world champion on it. Now yeah. looking back, Bruce Scott was the British and Commonwealth champion at the time. Yeah. I would have rather fought Bruce Scott for his British and Commonwealth title, and mm-hmm. I could have been one of the youngest ever cruiserweight winners. I would have been 21 years of age, British and Commonwealth champion, and 21 with 14 fights. But it is what it is. I done okay. Uh, I could have done better, and, but I done okay. And if you had had that belt, then you probably would have fought for it and won it out, right? Wouldn't you? I, I probably would have then at that, yeah. at that age, 21. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, I, I boxed Gary Delaney, and after I boxed Mark Robson, so it was plenty of Brits around. Um, to have that, but like you said, it is what it is. I done, I done okay. You're not, you're not, you're not um, planning on having any more fights now, though, are you? You finished now. I am. Are you? 
I had a feeling I yeah, I'll give you to the question there, Ralph, because I've seen little te- little teasers on I Twitter, mean, you know, so are you going to fight again, Enzo? Are you going to fight again? And it, it's the burly question, because your last fight was the last fight Jones Jr., wasn't it? No, no, I lost was my last fight. Um, so I, I, I made... I won't, I won't go into it. I made so many mistakes. I was still I was still eating as a light heavyweight to try to fight the recruits away. I was giving away. That was something. it. I was 13 stone six fighting 14 stone four. Um, and it's just air to me. It's just air to me. And it's just annoyed me. Not because I lost, because uh, of certain things that went on. And it's just it's really air to me. And over the last couple of years, especially when I had my disc problem, the thought of getting myself fighting fit to have one last one, um, has has kept me going and it's got me to where I am. It's got my mind sound. Uh, it's got my body and well, I'd like to say I'm probably in the best shape physically and mentally I've been in for the last ten years. And I've got forty nine professional fights. I've had fifty amateur fights. So I'd like to get fifteen pro fights. And if I don't do it now, I'm never going to do it. I've done a bit of sparring as well, and I, and I'm okay. Fantastic. So have you got any idea when that... Oh, dare we ask. It's going to be a natural question. Have you got a sort of a timeline, a date lined up? Or are you I, aiming I'm towards... I'm going to make a few phone calls over the weekend because, you know, I, like I said, my running times are better. The, the, my punch my punch power is just as good as it's ever been. Uh, I, you know, I've been uploading some clips of me in the bags and, you know, I, I like to I've think I look really that, sharp yeah. and strong and, and I just feel great. And... Um, there's a new arena in Swansea opening in the summer. Uh, I'd like to fight before then, uh, maybe a couple before then, and just have one in the summer, maybe something big or something decent, and I can say goodbye properly then. Um, it, it's eating at me to have this last one, but on the other side of things, I know a lot of fighters who are in my position who, who still, they still got that, that taste to... Uh, and that one last one they've been out of the ring for so long but they haven't done nothing I literally haven't been out of the gym for five years mm-hmm. I've literally trained and worked on trained. things for the last five years uh, if I if I don't get it if something comes up and something happens I don't get it I'll be absolutely gutted is it the end of the world? no I've got my boys in the gym I've got something to fall back on and I think the problem is when, when fighters are used to being in the limelight and being the the centre of attention, I think it's hard for them not to feel that that buzz anymore. And I think when they got nothing to do, I think they start falling apart, start having demons and fighting their demons. Uh, and I, I fought them demons as well. But like I said, I got the boys up the gym. I got something to fall back on. I got something to keep my mind occupied. Uh, but it'd be a shame if I didn't. I hope you do, because um, you know what, it will, yeah, it, will niggle, it, will niggle, it will niggle you, and you know, you've had all them fights, and you just want to have this one to put everything right, and then you can think, oh, and if, I've done if what I, I wanted w- to do now, and leave it alone. If I wasn't in shape, Marv, if I wasn't feeling so good, if my running times were bad, if I wasn't recovering, you know, I'm 40 years of age, I'm running six miles a day, I'm doing 15 rounds in a bag, flat out, I got, I got no aches, I got no pains, my diet's as best, best as ever been, um, I feel great. Yeah. But if I don't do it now, I'll never do it. So yeah, I, well I understand. Get it out of the way. Yeah. Um, smash, smash someone's ribs in, and I'll be happy. Yeah. Can, uh, you can carry on with oh, your boys, man. like you know, with the globe. I understand. Yeah. That. Like I said, you know, if yeah. it, I, I've knows when, when you when when you when you stop when you stop competing when you stop having that routine of training every day, and it's hard. It's hard to cope with them. You know, some, some fighters who are at the top. You look at Tyson Jones. That that was purely two men who got clinging on to something mm, and they yeah. just wanted to get it out. And, get it out. And I had no problem with that because they were fighting each other. I actually really enjoyed that bloody fight. I've got to be honest. I, I was very sceptical. I was like, oh, what a load of shit. And then literally, I, 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 was, I said, no, I'm not going to watch it. I'm not interested in watching that crap. And then literally about a day before, I thought, no, I've got to watch it. I've got to watch it now. It's like, and it was actually a really good fight. I really yeah, enjoyed it. Put, put good on them. Yeah. Good on them, I say. But like I said, they, they, they fought each other. They fought the same age. They didn't fight yeah. some young up-and-comer. They, they passed all medical tests. And I was the same, you know, I wasn't that interested. I'm a massive, even though I, 
I talks Roy Jones. I, I wasn't really a massive fan of Roy Jones, but I was a massive fan of Mike Tyson. Absolutely yeah. loved him. You know, he's probably the only time I've ever spoke to someone and been him and Duran. He's the only time I've ever been starstruck. Well, he spoke to you tonight, of. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I remember, I remember sitting, laying in bed, and the way in was on, and I thought, oh, I, yeah. I, I can't be bothered with the way in. And I sort of flicked over, and I thought, oh, I might as well watch it. And I swear to God, when Tyson came out and took his heart off, I had goose, I had goosebumps. And I was a fifty-four yeah. year old man, nothing to what he was, but he gave me goosebumps. And on the night, on the night, he showed some skills, and he still got some. He did. He did. He, 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 did. Did. he yeah. showed lots of skill. Look, I mean, his, his, his physique and everything was really impressive. I mean, for his age, I mean, the way he looked was impressive, wasn't it? You know? Yeah, amazing. Amazing. He'd done, uh, you know, he had small little segments and that little shift to the left, shift to the right to bring the uppercuts through the centre of the sternum. Mm-hmm. Um, he just he just looked really good. And, yeah. you know, I, I knew it and he, he went to a couple more. And I got no problem with that as long as he's fit, as long as he's healthy. And yeah. he fights uh, the same age as him. Why not? Yeah. Exactly. So do you think there might be a, a market for that then? You know, maybe they need to, uh, like a Legends of the Ring kind of thing. Well, that's what, I think that's what Tyson is doing. Um, I think that's what he's doing. He, he's doing a, a Legends League. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, I got no problem with that. It's sort of, it helps a lot of fighters, especially mentally. It gets them in shape. You know, if yeah. you look at what Tyson was a few years back, he, he was bloated, he was out of shape. He looked, he looked terrible, but now he, he looks in prime physical condition. He sure uh, did. As he prime really as you can does. get for that age. He really does. I mean, um, what do you think? Of, who's the other one of that we were chatting about? Is it Glenn, uh, Glenn, 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 Glenn McCory, McCory, was it? Glenn McCory. Talking about McCory. coming back and fighting Holyfield. Holyfield. I'm not going about that yeah. one. But... I was having a little read about yeah. that. Yeah. Did you see that? Uh, yeah, I heard, I heard uh, Glenn. I, I like Glenn. I think he's funny. Mm. Glenn is. And he's doing yeah. his runs in the morning. He's calling people out. Uh, I've heard him call Roy Jones out as well. Uh, yeah. I think I think that would be the one. You know, I think that would be the one for him. And uh, I think I think all he feels, I don't know. He just he just looks at a hard hard man. Even this age, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he yeah. was, you know, he was he was one of my favourites, and Tyson was one of my favourites as well. And I remember I was with the I was with the boys when I was young guy. It was nineteen ninety six. When they first boxed, and I told everyone, and I said, oh, if he was going to beat them, they said, No, you got a bad heart. They said, I'm telling you now, all oh, if he was going to beat them, he, he was just a rat right, who couldn't get who couldn't get a more apt nickname for Hollyfield, the real deal. He was he was just he was the real deal. He was, it's like the freaking Terminator, wasn't he? <laughs> oh, brilliant, brilliant. No fear. Even when he bit, even when Tyson bit his ear off, you know, it was. Oh. It, <laughs> He looked like he was still going on. I know the ref stopped it, but he looked like he was ready to carry on, didn't he? You know, he was so yeah, pissed he, off. Um, he, he fears God and nothing else. And nothing else. Like the way he fights. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I mean, one fight for me that stands out for you as well is the one in Germany. Was it Jürgen Bremer? Oh, yeah. When you got the big... Yeah, I mean, tell us... I mean, how was that? I mean, I was pissed off for you in that fight because... Yeah, I had you win in that, yeah. you know? And I was really, I was even more pissed off that you didn't get a rematch, I'm not going to lie. But, um, I mean, obviously, by the by, but, yeah. right. but that lump and that, that... That goes down as the worst camp I've ever had for a fight. Um, I, I, I had long had laser surgery on my eyes. Um, I pro- possibly went into it a bit too soon, the, the training. Um, yeah. But... First week of sparring, I suffered a corneal abrasion because my because of the the drops I was taking, the thin my cornea, it, it sort of popped my cornea. So I couldn't see for a week, so I was out running every morning with with one eye closed, so I couldn't I couldn't see nothing. I come back, I healed, I sparred again. The right eye went another week. Uh, my I blew my calf running, so I couldn't run. Then Jeez. I done my el- then I done my elbow. Then I had a, an infection on my arm. With, I had to have stuff off the doctor which blew my weight up from cutting weight. Uh, and I remember a week before, a week before the fight, I suffered another small corneal abrasion. And I remember speaking to Gary and I said, God, something's telling me not to, not to go through with this fight. And uh, he said, look, Enz, I still think you can beat him. And I looked at Gary and I thought, yeah, I can. And then that happened the first round. Um, come back to the corner. Couldn't couldn't see nothing. 
um, took me to the took me to the doctor. The doctor said, "Can you see?" I went, "Yeah." I think he's playing the obvious to everyone. I couldn't see, uh, and I, I basically just didn't know what he was. You know, I was literally, <laughs> I was literally letting him hit me. As soon as he hit me, I knew what he was, and I'd fire straight back. Um, but then in the press conference after the fight, I was sitting there. I had the ice pack on my eye. I, you know, I think Carly Sullivan said to me, "You could go again." I said, "Give me a coffee, and I'll go again." I guess. And um, Jurgen Bremer said something about that. That's the hardest punch, punch <coughs> I ever faced. He said it was literally, it was hitting my arms, and he said it, it was absolutely crippling me. Like, wow. And um, why did you? I mean, uh, you, um, like, you might not want to answer. Why was there never a rematch for that? Was that just because they didn't want, want it? He never wanted. Didn't, that. didn't want to yeah, go back yeah. in with you. Um, so soon as he mentioned about the power. Uh, and I remember yeah. thinking I didn't really hit him properly I didn't catch him properly I just knew it would never happen again and um, they, they they sort of they messaged us a week after the fight uh, saying would I take the rematch as long as my eye had healed uh, yeah. my eye had healed completely it healed the next day so I don't know what went on um, so we went to the doctors uh, had a certificate yeah nothing wrong with his eyes nothing wrong with his vision sent that over them so then I thought yeah the, the rematch was on and then just you had nothing then and it was just uh, well I was just unlucky again <laughs> no it sucked because I you know I, I, for me but I was gutted for you in that because I just thought yeah you know, me as well honest. I remember yeah I was I was genuinely gutted watching that because I, I thought you I got it you know, yeah, I can understand you not wanting to invite you again though <laughs> well, I, yeah no totally you struggled totally, totally. yeah <laughs> Totally good. So, I mean, we won't keep you much on, but just quick, what was what's, what what was the favorite? What was your favorite moment of your? Obviously, you're going to carry on. You're telling us, which is great. But what was, what's been the favorite moment in your career for you? What's been the highlight for you? The standout. I, I, will, I will be honest. I, it's been a few. It's been a few. Uh, going over to Russia as a European fighting for a European title when no one thought I had a chance. I told everyone I'm not going to the first round. I'm not going to the first round. The the vindication of the rematch against Oliver McKenzie knocking him out. After what that I was did. brilliant. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that, that was another one. Um, in, mm. The Bruce Scott, the Bruce Scott one for a twenty-two-year-old to do that. The Bruce Scott, uh, you know. The, but the one that stands out, and people think it's when I won the world title, and it, it pro- obviously it was when I won the world title because I beat Marcelo Dominguez. He was tough as tough as teeth, two-time yeah, WBC yeah. world champion, uh, and everyone thinks that's my highlight. My actual highlight of is not actually winning a title. I see my dad smiling when I won the world title. It was basically, it was like his dream, more than mine, to be honest, to have his son as a world champion. To see him smile, I'll probably never, ever forget that more than actually winning the world title. Don't get me wrong, the world title was a great buzz. But to see my dad smile, who never showed much emotion, and he did that night. You know, that meant more to me and that probably stands out more to me than pretty much anything I've ever done. Yeah. Just seem so proud. So proud. Yeah, I can, I can understand yeah. that. Um, I, I'm going to say yeah. uh, and another one. And I, I want to say I can understand in you um, wanting the rematch with Ovil because um, the first one, it should never have been stopped. We, we, you know in your mind that that should never have oh. been stopped. And so I understand why you wanted to put that right and have a rematch with that one because a lot of people know that that should have never been stopped. Oh, stopped. I, I think, and in your I mind, think, you knew that. I think any, anyone who I just had a bad year. I, my son diagnosed with autism. My, my father died. I had other stuff going on. And yeah, it was I understand. Just, it, was, it was just, no, but it was just literally topped off the year for me. And I remember, I remember, I remember him throwing a right hand. I, actually, I remember at the end of the first round, I hit him with a body shot. And he sucked in the air, and you. <gasps> so I thought, oh. So I come back to the corner. I said, the guy. I said, he's not lasting much longer. So we come out. He threw a right hand. I caught it on the glove, and I went back. And he decides to jump in with four, or five shots. And in those four, or five shots, he hit the glove every every punch. Mm. And he literally was out of breath. So I knew, oh, let him have a couple more shots now, and he's done. And then Ian John Lewis steps in. He's made the decision now. And as he's made the decision, he's locked at me and he, he knows straight the way he cocked up. He, he realised, I remember, he realised he shouldn't have stopped it. Mm. He knows yeah. straight the way. So it was like, but it, it was uh, it was just one of them years. And I remember, I remember boxing, 
Carl Wilde, I think, in between, in between Mackenzie, and I was awful, and I was awful. I remember my, my brother phoning me, and he said he was awful last night. I, I said I know, and they tried to they tried to put me off the Mackenzie rematch, and uh, it was like um, I thought to myself, I won it, and they said no, oh, he's he's this, he's going on the bigger thing. I said trust me. I said, you get me that fight. I said, you see a different end. I said, I can't be bothered here tonight. And that's not taken away from Carl Wilde. I just didn't have that little buzz. I didn't have that little, those nerves inside me. And that was the fight I wanted more than anything. And, you know, it was a great fight. And I remember, I remember Gary in a game in a game plan. He wanted me to box. He wanted me to move. Sim- similar like Tony Bellew done against McKenzie on the jab move. And I said, Gar, it's not my way. I'm going to meet him head on. And he said, who can't do that? I said, trust me, I'll meet them head on and we go for it. So Gary just sort of shook his head and he came up with the plan to the way I went, the way I wanted to do it. And it was a great fight uh, and totally vindicated in the end to knock him out the way that I did. So I think it's the first time I've ever seen someone out cold standing up. So I caught him that up a cut and he was just out. Out. And then, you know what, uh, Ems, you know what, the funny thing is, look what he went on to achieve after you'd beat him. Because even when he fought for a world title, I thought he'd done enough. It, it was draw. close. It was close, and he couldn't. He couldn't. It was a draw out there in Argentina. Um, did he do enough to win? I don't know, but I think I think anywhere else in the world he could have got the nod. Yeah, um, you know, we, you know, after you you knocked him out, he seemed to do so well. But then I think he had a, a, a little heart problem, and he had to yeah. jack it all in in the end. Yeah. But um, lovely, after, lovely after you beat him, he, he, he did do quite well, didn't he? You, you know, we yeah, carried on to. He, I think he won the British Cruiserweight. I think he defended yeah. it a couple of times. Uh, he had fought, one, mm. yeah, he fought Ramirez out in Argentina. And like you said, a hell of a fight. And yeah. anywhere else in the world, he could have had the nod to win it. Yeah. And then we could have, we could have had the trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> it's true. Brilliant. I mean, is there any, um, I mean, for you as well, is there any fights that you wish had taken place for you? Any fights that, you know, when you were around cruiserweight, light heavyweight, was there any fights that you really wanted that just didn't materialise? Anyone you sort of thought, shit, I really wanted that one? No, to be honest, I, I was satisfied. I would, have, I would have liked the Johnny Nelson fight. I would have liked that. That was matched twice. Um, yeah. I would, have, I would have liked that. Uh, it was a couple of other fighters I think I would have matched up well with. Just just purely um, from uh, from an entertainment value, I think. Me and Michael Cleverly. Cleverly? Where do you come from? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is real. This is I was, trying, up in, I was trying to sneak late. in. I was trying to sneak go. in. I've had a right now. Really, really sorry <laughs> to be rude. I'm very what sorry. Happened, to be what, what happened with Cleverly was we were friends and <laughs> I went down to like the heavyweight. <laughs> and I remember seeing him on a show and I, I'd done an interview and I'd done an interview and I said, look, we're friends. Uh, I'm not chasing him. Um, if if someone will put a big show on, we can earn a lot of money. We'll shake hands before we fight. We we'll shake hands after. And you know, I, I was like that. Then he he went behind my back and said that I'll smash eggs or it'd be easy and all that. So things things brewed from there. Um, it would have been a great fight for Wills. It was only going to be one winner though. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say one more thing? Your fight yeah. with Brave he's disappeared, Fate, anyway. Of course. Sorry, I was just going to say the fight with Brave Fate is still one of the best fights I've seen in a oh, British I ring. About that. What a yeah. fight! I forgot about that. End. I wish I again. Off. Watch it again. Off. <laughs> yeah, I watched it. I watched it. I watched. What a fight! I know. Cracking fight. It was um. He was a good fight, though. I, I got I got some of the kids here messing around trying to make me laugh. So sorry about that. <laughs> So um, uh, yeah, it was it was a fight, and it was I I got no fear. I never had any fear of anyone. I don't go in the ring worrying about what they're gonna do. It's always been all, all about me. Uh, and I, I set a plan to come out and jump and break weight and go for him quickly. And I remember him hitting me with a left hand, left hook, and he caught me in the shoulder. He didn't catch me in the chin. He caught me in the shoulder. And I remember thinking it was like a sledgehammer hitting me. So for the first time in my life. I had a bit of fear, and that's why I boxed the way that I did. Other, otherwise, I'd have just gone in brawling as usual. <laughs> and it was a masterclass, by the way. Fantastic yeah, point. Was... 
It was, uh, it was, it was good. And, you know, WBC world champion. And the fight after me, he went on and knocked out um, Pablo Hernandez, who was a long, went on to oh, be yeah. the long reigning IBF champion. Yeah, I remember that. Well, guys, I suppose we better let Enzo get on because I've noticed the signal keeps going out on this Zoom as well. I don't know if it's me or you guys or or oh, what's really. going on there. But thanks, for, thanks very much for your time, Enzo. I mean, you've been with us nearly an hour now. That's very generous. Yeah, no problem. Been, it's been very enjoyed it. Brilliant chat. Uh, nice yeah. to meet you properly out. Yeah, you're a top <laughs> man. You are. Thank you, en Enzo. Likewise. Enzo, love you, Enzo. Enzo, before you go, I just want to say thank you for the motivational videos that you put out, mate. Yeah, hundred um, percent. Uh, difficult times and everything. Uh, they certainly motivate me, and I've seen all nice messages you get and everything like that. So keep up the good work, mate. Really, oh, man. Thank you, pal. Sorry for the late show. And good luck. <laughs> no yeah, nothing like that. Just turn up late, eh, Rich? Oh, on. mate. <laughs> but good luck with the the fight that you know whatever whatever happens that materializes of that. Good oh, luck man. with it. We look forward to seeing it. Top oh, man. Thanks for having me on, lads. Not quite. No worries. Take care, mate. Good luck. Good luck. Thanks. See you guys. Yeah, bye.